Uh, so um, congratulations to, uh, I guess all of our newly elected Dems and thank you, all of you. Thank you to everybody who went to Arizona. Um, thank you to everybody who walked. Thank you to writing texts. Thank you for writing letters and postcards and dropping off door hangers. Um, this, it, I think it's actually like pretty monumental uh, in terms of Arizona. I remember last time like when, <laughs> when um, having a funny debate with one of my girlfriends who's from Arizona at the Hotel Del Coronado for when Trump was elected about, she was saying, Arizona is a swing state, you know, Arizona is a swing state. We were all, no, no, not a swing state. But um, she was right um, the whole time, right? Uh, so um, thank you everybody to did, who did all of those things. And um, I don't have a champagne, but for those of you that do, um, please have a drink of it and congratulate yourselves. And I'm really so happy and yay, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody uh, for everybody's hard work. Um, John, I am making you the host so that you can, um, you can stream Hang on a second. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much to everybody. Um, so, uh, and for order of business today, um, I do have Brandon up who wanted to say something for Western service workers. So Brandon, you can go ahead and then anybody who's either a representative of an elected, I don't think we have anyone who's going to be running for something this close after the election, but no, no, you never know. Um, so, um, you guys can queue up if you or or any other issues that you'd like to bring up in front of the club. Um, so Brandon, go ahead. You're up. Hang on, I just saw him in here. Is he off? Okay, you guys are muted. Hang on. I think. For you guys, would you guys would you would you like to talk about your holiday drive? I can hear you typing, but not talking. We cannot hear you. No. Aaron, why don't you let Doug Case go? Before? Okay, Doug Case, Doug, okay. go ahead and you guys can get your tech stuff figured out. Okay, Doug, go ahead. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm on my uh, telephone. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Doug Case, the uh, political affairs director. And uh, pro tem uh, Tony Atkins, out yeah. this year, and she people weren't aware of that, but she won. Uh, by, <clears throat> more importantly, she was working locally and across the state. Um, <clears throat> Doug, we lost you. Why don't we have Brandon talk? Doug, we Since, lost you. Uh, Do you want to continue? Are you good? I'm sorry. Go ahead. We lost you for a moment there. Okay. Am I breaking up? Uh, you yeah. were. Just if you can repeat what you said, that would be great. About that. I'm having trouble. I'm speaking on my phone. Uh, we were successful in getting a two more Democrats to the uh, state Senate, uh, bringing us a pool of 31, which is more Democrats than there has been in the Senate since uh, 1883, uh, before I was born. Um, Democrats in Orange County are uh, Josh Newman, uh, who actually was re recalled as re the Carl Mary Mayo did a recall a couple of years ago. So we got him reelected, and also David Min in Orange County area was elected. Uh, you may have seen it for this past week. Uh, um, legislative analyst. Uh, that there will be a uh, $26 billion uh, this year over anticipated. Uh, and so they were projecting the impact of COVID. That is the goal of the legislature uh, to cuts that were made. Uh, some of the trigger cuts pay with the federal money, which never came, includes uh, Prop 98 to education, a higher education and compensation, uh, bringing back some were uh, cut due to, I mean, air aging and developmental disability programs, um, assisting local governments in, uh, suffering the most as a result of uh, the 
particularly communities like San Diego that rely heavily on them and the transit occupancy tax. Um, and then finally, I'm making some new investments uh, in as a COVID-19 health crisis, Californians of homelessness. And to reserve for future. And now I'm going to switch over to my backup and hopefully I'll have better connection. So thank you. Thank you, Doug. Um, all right, um, Brandon, can we go to you next? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes, excellent. Yes. Okay. Thank you, everybody. So my name is Brandon McDonald. I'm the operations manager with Western Service Workers Association. And um, this is Raquel Garcia with me. She's one of our members. And for those of you that don't know, WSWA is a membership association of some of the lowest paid workers in San Diego. And our members have really, you know, we live in the areas that are most affected by the pandemic. And just to give you an idea, unemployment got up to 43% in the neighborhood where our office is located. Sandag reported that 23.3% of those making less than $27,000 a year lost their jobs in San Diego, whereas less than 1% of those earning $60,000 a year lost their jobs, okay? So this pandemic, unfortunately, it, well, it, it hasn't affected us all equally. Um, we didn't close our doors for a single day during this pandemic. Um, instead, we doubled the output of our self-help benefits programs. We distribute two tons of food every week um, almost every other Sunday, doctors volunteer to see our low-income members free of charge. Um, and uh, we've won numerous members. their stimulus checks, their unemployment checks. We've gotten COVID tests and treatment for people that didn't know where else to turn. Um, we've, we've safely kept numerous families fed while they were under quarantine. And, um, and now uh, most of you know that WSWA is not just about benefits, but many of you remember how WSWA was demanding um, affordable water and an end to water shutoff since 2012 and, and how our constant pressure on the city council led to a moratorium on shutoffs in 2019. Thank goodness before the pandemic hit. So the state legislature um, directed the state water board in 2015 to create an assistance plan to help people with their water bills. And we were really excited. Uh, they, they finally completed their plan five years later this February and the legislature hasn't passed the assistance plan yet, but I mean, uh, we need help now. And uh, we pay twice the national average for water in San Diego. And WSWA members decided that we need to have this legislation now. So we have designed postcards, okay, um, that we are sending to Senator Bill Dodd, who sponsored the legislation to create the, the low income rate assistance program in the first place. And also to our very own Tony Atkins, the president of the Senate to urge them to pass legislation in order to, um, in order to stop water shutoffs and also to make water affordable. Um, um, Raquel, if you could explain what the demands from our membership are. Oh, it's very horrible, very depressed. Uh, we know people, they, they love their jobs. Mom and daddy both work in the restaurants. Yeah, we, we are in a very big, big, sad problem right now. And there's a lot that the Point Loma Democratic Club has done and can do for us. Tell them what other, the, the demands for our water campaign are. Stop water shutoffs for the whole state of California. Charge no more than 3% of your income for water by the United Nations recommended. Don't raise our tax to pay for this. Stop corporate tax breaks to billion dollars corporations. And these are on the back of the postcards. So we're asked, we are asking club members to send these postcards and you can either pick them up at our office any day of the week on 30th and Imperial, um, or you can ask us and we'll send them to you. But um, the other ask is for volunteers. This Tuesday and also the Tuesday before Christmas, we'll be distributing um, nearly 100 turkey baskets each to members who requested them. And beyond this, we need volunteers literally every single day for transportation and many other things. We also need 
toys. And we want to thank the club so much for the support that you have already given for this toy distribution. Thank you very much. But we have a lot of demand this holiday season. And we have a registry, which I believe is posted on the website or Facebook or something like that. Um, so if you would like to contribute that way personally, we would really appreciate that. Finally, our association does need financial support. We've doubled the amount um, of our benefit program during the pandemic, but it's also been twice as hard to garner donations um, as before. So, you know, we're, we're looking at raising $15,000 um, to catch up on expenses before the new year. So to help out in any of these ways, um, please just contact WSWA um, and I'll send out um, our phone number via chat so if anybody can give us a call um, and help out in any way, otherwise we really want to let everybody know in the club that we really appreciate all your support that you've given us over the years and especially now. So thank you very much. Thanks guys. Um, Western service workers, they do, uh, for all of you guys who are local, they have the postcards for the water shut offs at people's co-op um, that they're, they're handing those out as well as selling the calendars. Uh, so for those of you that are local, you can pick that stuff up there. Uh, do we have anybody else who's a representative of an elected or who would like to um, do the two minutes before the club? Anybody, anybody? Michelle Krug's hand is raised. Oh, okay. Um, go ahead, Michelle. Michelle, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, Michelle, uh, you're, you're muted still. Thank you. Um, can you hear me now, Marin? Yes, can I think yes, yes, yes. Yep, yep. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, Michelle Krug, your regional director for Area 20. I wanted to make sure that uh, the club knows that the ADEM elections, Assembly District Delegate elections, are up and running. Um, they will actually be taking place in January. But if you're interested in running as a candidate to be um, a delegate to the state convention, then please go to adem, a -D -E -M dot cudem dot org website. John, could you please put that on the chat? I'm sure you've already done it, known you. Um, and you'll be able to see two links. One is to become a candidate, and the link is to get people to sign up to get absentee ballot. This election is going to be virtual um, and there will be the ability for people to call in if they don't have a computer, et cetera, to the state party, but they will be getting their ballot at home and going ahead and mailing it in. It has to be back by January 20th to be received um, at the P.O. Box in Sacramento, and then from there it'll get counted. Um, but here, to be a candidate, it's November 15th till December 15th, and that's a hard deadline. So I'm more than happy to talk to people offline. Uh, John, if you want to put my phone number, my cell phone number in the uh, chat, I'm happy to talk to people. Um, you'll probably want to write a statement. You have up to 2,400 characters plus a video that you can include. And the deadline for asking people to get an absentee ballot or for people to request an absentee ballot is January 11th. Um, and the last thing is on January 16th, the California Democratic Party will actually be having a virtual e-board meeting for those of you that like to go to the caucuses or standing committees. Again, happy to talk to you more offline. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Um, I talk to you. Um, so I think uh, we are one minute over from our first speaker, uh, Genevieve. John, do you see Genevieve or Susan? Do you see her? No, I don't see her in the in the list. I'm here. I'm here. Oh. I, you are. Are you on somebody else's name? I shouldn't 
be. I don't know why I'm Andrea St. Julian's name, but that's interesting. I will rename myself. I just thought Andrea was on here twice because she's so wonderful. <laughs> I think you probably used her link. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I did use her link. Yeah. Sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so um, so welcome, um, Genevieve Jones Wright, um, who uh, many of you may recognize uh, from when she was uh, running for district attorney, uh, coming to speak to the club in in, in the past. Um, I'm super excited about our uh, program lineup today. We have three amazing attorneys to talk about uh, some some really interesting legal things. I don't know if any of you, I, I recognize some other lawyers in in the audience. Um, so um, Genevieve uh, is is going to speak a little bit about something that Susan recently told me about that concerns um, traffic lights that is really very interesting. Um, so Genevieve, I'm going to turn it over to you. You can introduce yourself. Um, and I know we have kind of a, um, a hard stop, so I'm not going to waste any more. All right. Well, I will try to keep this very short and sweet on everyone's um, Sunday evening. First of all, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to hear that people are excited to hear from attorneys and to hear that you all are going to be hearing from three attorneys and you're excited. I'm like, whoa, never happens. So I love looking around the Zoom room and seeing some friendly faces, uh, definitely faces that I've engaged with over the last few years. So it's good to be back with the Point Loma Dems. I am here to talk about the work that the Trust SD Coalition has been doing. I am a facilitator of the Trust SD Coalition. Trust SD stands for Transparent and Responsible Use of Surveillance Technology San Diego. And for a little over a year now, we've been, I will say, in a battle with the city of San Diego to get some oversight, transparency, and accountability over surveillance technology that has been being used primarily by the San Diego Police Department. So we found out that our city had been deploying over 3,000 of these so-called smart street lights all over the city of San Diego and also spreading throughout the county. And these smart street lights have microphones and cameras and no one knew that this was happening. And not only that, when they went to get approval for the contract from city council, they completely hid the purpose of these lights. What city council was told was that these lights were going to be part of an environmental project, that it was going to help us cut down on our use of electricity. It was going to save the city money. It was also going to help San Diego build jobs and it would help entrepreneurs and none of that happened. We didn't save money. It actually cost us more money for these lights and no one has created a company or gotten a job. It was just a way for GE to make money. Now our city fell for this the same way that our city fell for a lot of other things that we signed our names to. I mean, do we have to talk about 101 Ash Street? And so I call this the technological 101 Ash Street. We signed a contract with GE for $30 million. And just like with 101 Ash Street, we were left holding the bag, we as the taxpayers. Uh, the contract was very lopsided. It did not inure to our benefit. And so the Trust SD Coalition quickly formed and we had our very first press conference on Constitution Day last year. Since then, um, the, the more than 30 community organizations that make up the coalition had a lot of wonderful victories where we basically um, got the city to say, look, it's not just about the smart streetlights. This is about all of the surveillance technology that our city deploys or will deploy. We need accountability. We need transparency. We need oversight. The public should know about this. We should know when we're being watched. From the very start of the coalition's work, Council Member Montgomery stepped stepped right up, no pun intended, and she um, was able to get two other council members to sign onto a memo that she wrote. And the memo basically said, these community members are right. If we're gonna be doing this, then we need to have transparency. And so as the head of the public safety committee, she and along with the other committee members rejected the city's policy that would only go towards oversight of the smart streetlights. 
she had a very, she had a vision and she knew that what the city needed was comprehensive oversight over all of the surveillance technology. And so unanimously, her committee rejected the city's single use policy and said, no, we need to work on getting ordinances that will actually work to give us the accountability ability we need over all of the surveillance technology that the city may want to acquire, use, or buy. So I'll fast forward just a little. The, tr the Trust SD Coalition wrote two ordinances. The first ordinance would be oversight as to all surveillance technology that the city wants to purchase. All of the rules about what that looks like. The second ordinance is an ordinance that establishes what we intended to be a privacy advisory commission, now a privacy advisory board made up of community members like you and I who would listen to the city as they uh, bring these ideas for surveillance technology and they would make a decision about whether the city could purchase the technology. This is extremely important because one, they would look at the cost benefits analysis. They would be able to look at well, are we actually going to get anything from these technologies? Are, are we just gonna be throwing money away? It will also take into consideration our civil liberties. None of this stuff was ever taken into account before signing that $30 million contract. I should tell you that since then GE sold the contract to another company and then they sold it to another company. And so now it's Ubiquia. Um, there was an effort for the city to give the exclusive use of the the footage of the surveillance technology through the smart street lights just to the police. They wanted to give more money to the police department for this. And they also wanted to, I'll just be very clear. They wanted the city to be able to use this technology to continue to what we call spy on community members without us ever having any of the benefits that we were originally sold on and it was gonna cost us even more money. So two weeks ago, we got both ordinances, the one that would provide for the rules for the city to acquire this new technology, any surveillance technology so that it is properly vetted and the establishment of this privacy advisory board passed. It was passed unanimously. So now it is gonna to go to meet and confer. So right on time, I see council member Montgomery step just pop into the room. And to be completely honest with you all, we would not have these ordinances in place at this moment, at this juncture without Council Member Montgomery. This was a huge, huge step, not just for privacy rights, not just for civil liberties. This is a huge step in the wake of how things are going to be done when we're talking about surveillance and the country is looking at us and council member Montgomery step really took the lead on this. She wasn't afraid. She was very bold. She said, we have to do this. And like I said earlier, she was not willing to do a piecemeal. She knew that it wasn't going to just be the smart streetlights as an issue that the next day there was going to be something else. And the next month and the next year, there was going to be something else. And so this is that forward thinking that we need at City Hall that she gives us. And so we are at a place right now where she has always been the champion for these ordinances, of these ordinances. We're looking forward to how it comes out, how they come out of meet and confer. And we are looking forward to the transparency and the oversight that will be given by way of those ordinances. So that is my update. I don't know if there's any questions or if there's time for questions. I have a question. Sure. There's time. Genevieve, if you have the time, yes, and if yeah. you're going to take questions, I think we have. Um, um, I, I have a question. Um, I understand in Portland, the police were not able to use the data that they had collected. Um, they were using something called, somebody was telling me, I don't really understand this, I'm sure you will, uh, Genevieve, Stingray technology and the data was uh, illegally gathered um, uh, at um, different um, rallies and protests. Uh, uh, the, and they collected the info of the activists. 
uh, phone numbers, addresses, and, and they had that in the data. They couldn't use it legally. So they did a data dump uh, to Trump supporters. Do you know anything about that? I don't know it, about it, I don't Did know. our police do that? So yes, the use of stingrays are very real. And just so that you all know what stingrays are, this is technology that is used that looks like it's a cell phone tower to cell phones that they want to get information from. And so your phone will ping to this manufactured cell phone tower, which is really in a little case that law enforcement has. And so they're getting your information that way. That's just my little, I'm trying not to be too, um, you know, crazy with how you actually explain it, but that's pretty much what a stingray is. Yes, it could happen here. Will it happen here? Hopefully not, because we're gonna have ordinances in place that will give the rules about what our police do in the city of San Diego. So again, this is more than just the smart street lights technology. This would be all surveillance technology that falls under the purview of the ordinances. So we wouldn't have those types of issues, Susan. No, not under the ordinances, which is again, just a great thing. Because again, it's not about one technology. There's so many different technologies that are employable and for us as community members to not know, you know, about this stuff is just, it's troubling to me. It's very troubling to me. And so this was one way to resolve that. So we could be in the know. All of the meetings of the privacy advisory board would be open. They would be public. The public would be able to weigh in. And it's just a fantastic idea to have this. And we are only the second city to have this. We are number two after Oakland. And we established our privacy advisory board in conjunction with the surveillance oversight ordinance. So we are really leading the way with the help of council member Montgomery Step. And like I said, everyone is watching us because we have trailblazed this. Everyone's looking at us as the model now. Any other questions? Yeah, Merrin, next question is from Rob Howard. Howard. Yes. Uh, real quick, I uh, really do appreciate you guys working on this because, again, this is critical to our privacy. But the question is, um, can you briefly, because I know I could, I tend to get into the weeds, but briefly what the contract covers and um, what well, really just what the contract covers? Was it ongoing? Is it an ongoing contract or was it for a just particular period of time? Council Member Montgomery, you may be better equipped to talk about the contract itself. Uh, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Rob, are you talking about the uh, street light contract? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't recall the time uh, limit on it. What I do recall is that and Genevieve may, may have pointed this out. It was brought to council under the guise of having a smarter city, being able to track uh, certain patterns uh, in the city so that we could provide better services around that. And what ha and that was back in 2016. So we were still dealing with this issue and it is now uh, 2020. And I, I don't, I would have to go back and look at the details because I actually was not a part of that vote. Um, so I just knew that it was costing us a lot of money um, at the time that, that I got to council and also that it was being used for, for uh, the types of things that were not discussed before city council. Um, and, and I do, and so right now what has happened is essentially the, the city council has defunded the streets, the smart street light program. And so right now, because we are not um, paying on that contract, even though there's, there are details behind that that are very technical and they can still actually be used and the company uh, can still harbor some of our information, which is very troubling and concerning. Also another reason why we need this privacy advisory board because these are the experts that would be able to weigh in um, on those types of issues before we enter another contract like this. But uh, I can get the terms uh, as far as the, the time down to you. I don't, I don't have that right now and I, I don't remember it, unfortunately. Um, just real quick on Stingray, um, just um, 
I, I want you all to know that there were some efforts to, to try to keep those types of technologies out of the ordinance. And so it's just very important that, that we have this and, you know, um, glad that Susan brought it up because those are the types of things. We also have a contract that is coming up for a possible renewal with the shot spotters. Uh, shot spotters are only uh, placed in the fourth district right now. They're supposed to be able to um, allow officers to know when a shot has been fired um, so that they can go straight to the place where that has occurred but they're, they really have not worked for that purpose. So we're um, trying to figure out why um, this is some, some type of technology that, that officers want. Are there other things that these shot spotters pick up? So anyway, th um, there's a lot around surveillance and uh, Rob, I'll get, that, I'll get that time frame to you. But right now we, we council has defunded this, this effort, so. Great, thank you, I appreciate it. And I was also the lastly just curious as to if that contract and that hold, hold area was brought by staff and if so, what staff? Because I'm curious who is actually bringing this type of um, um, technology forward under the guise of one thing when the reality is it was really being used for something else. That, that's troubling to me. And that is actually through the work of the coalition also brought up in the ordinance that, you know, when those types of things, when those services are transferred, we need to know about them. I, if I am not mistaken, the environmental services department brought this up at first. Um, and then it switched to a sustainability department that we do now have, which they do. Um, and then from sustainability, it just went to the police. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it, it has been, it's, it's moving around a lot because it just wasn't a, a good idea uh, to begin with. Um, and so it, it has moved around a lot and that is very concerning. And it was also very concerning for city council. One of the things that um, came up was that, you know, we don't, we don't want this to be framed as we are not allowing officers to use technology to, to solve uh, crime, specifically uh, violent crime. Um, but it also can't just be a free for all. Uh, there has to be accountability in that. So, so you're absolutely right. And that did happen with this and hopefully the measures uh, will, will change that. Thank you. And I'm still here. It's just that my internet is being really crazy. So I'm off video hoping that it will stop being spotty. Um, uh, Gary uh, Gardner, did you have a question um, for either speaker? Yes, I just had a comment, but I can't see Genevieve, but, but I know what you look like. <laughs> thank you so much. I just wanted to say thank you for your leadership. Just on so many fronts, you're fighting for all the good things that we need. And, uh, you know, I think this is the first Sunday in a long time that now that we know we're going to have a new president, we can actually feel a little safer and rest and and I feel really good about that. And I also feel good about the work that you're doing, Genevieve, and the other folks that are working on this and, and Monica. And I'm looking forward to when I can feel more secure in the future of our city when Monica is hopefully elected the president of the city council. That's all. Amen, Gary. I join you in that. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Um, do we have any other questions? When I first heard about uh, this this uh, streetlight plan, it's like this is how all um, dystopian sci-fi novels start, right? It's um, very it's very bad <laughs> um, on many levels. Um, uh, so uh, any other any other questions? I know that Genevieve had to, had to drop off a little bit um, sooner, maybe than some of the other speakers, and I wanted to properly introduce Council Member uh, Montgomery Step. So um, if we have any other questions right now. I just want to say bye to my dear, dear friend, Genevieve, before she has to log off. Well, now I don't want to leave. I feel like I need to tell the husband he can wait. I want to hear what you no, have. No, don't tell Oliver he has to wait. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so I'd like to introduce... Uh, Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Genevieve. Thank you um, for speaking to that. And then, uh, so uh, Council Member uh, Monica Montgomery Step is uh, joining us um, to answer uh, questions about that. Also, um, kind of general uh, city council business um, questions. And she will.
will stay on to answer questions. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and uh, just to, to uh, for those of you that are wondering in the chat, uh, she is also running for city council president. Uh, the other person that is running is uh, Jen Campbell. Uh, so um, council member uh, Montgomery Step, I'm gonna turn it over, over to you. Thank you very much. And if my internet starts to act crazy, I guess try to let me know. Um, but I, I appreciate you all having me uh, this Sunday afternoon. Happy Sunday. Um, I've already talked a little bit, so um, I'll, I'll try to make this a, a little shorter. Um, but I, I want to talk about a couple of things. And I know that Andrea is here to talk about Measure B. And she'll talk about all the successes of that. And we've uh, spoken about the surveillance ordinance, but I think those are two good models of the way that I try to govern. Uh, it's the way that we ran the campaign that resulted in one of the highest numbers of voters that we have seen in District 4 since the districts went to district only elections. Um, and it's a very collaborative effort. I believe that we have so much to offer in the city of San Diego. Our residents have so much to offer. Uh, and are so um, forward thinking and have so many different diverse perspectives that we can draw from to make this city really a better place and for folks to be able to take ownership of that growth. And so with that in mind, that's how I try to govern. And I will tell you that it's not the easiest thing to do all the time. Um, it is it, sometimes easier to stay in our bubbles at City Hall because they're, they're created for a reason right? They're created so sometimes we can forget about the public and some of the public's needs and go back on what we said during campaign and all that. And so um, I um, definitely have, have had some pitfalls, but I've always tried to come back to the community and always tried to be um, a communicative uh, council member. And I think that, that I owe all of my success and what we've been able to do to uh, hard work, into coalition building, into community members. Because uh, the people show up, I think, when you show up for the people. And that is what this has, has been about for me. And it's really, truly been an honor to serve in this way. It has been very hard, <laughs> but it has been an absolute honor. And so with that same mindset, uh, I do want to take on the council presidency. It is. Uh, requires a dual responsibility of a council member to still be a council member for the district that got them to the seat in the first place and also take on uh, you know the citywide docket and, and set that agenda for the city. Um, I believe that I'm well positioned to do that. Um, I can look at some additional accomplishments that we've been able to do over these past two years, setting up um, an office of race and equity that We'll, we'll have to do with um, different ways to reimagine re policing and public safety, but also we'll tackle the pay uh, inequity that we have at the city. Currently for every uh, uh, dollar that, uh, well, every 61 cents that a black woman makes at the, at the city, uh, her white male counterpart uh, makes a dollar. And so we have many, many issues to tackle and, um, you know, the, the, the imagining policing is, is, is really just one of them. Um, in addition, we've been able to provide uh, additional funding through COVID funding for businesses, small businesses in particular, for uh, people of color who own businesses and women who have really, really been hit hard by this pandemic. Um, we've been able to do that and to help um, the Strategic Alliance of uh, Chambers uh, reach a high goal, almost a million dollars, uh, that has really never been done before to provide technical assistance for businesses, um, all, but also uh, grants uh, to, to keep going during this time. So we've also been able to, um, we're at the last stages of having a San Diego energy equity complex right in the heart of District 4. I'm so, so, so happy about this that I think the whole city will benefit from this, this complex. And so um, we're doing quite a bit um, and it's very fulfilling to see that work come into play. I really, really hope that um, I'm able to obtain the seat of council presidency 
so that we can continue to build on the power of the people that reside in the city and the people that want to see a better city, the people that have ideas about how that should happen. Um, and so, you know, with that, the pattern uh, stays the same. I, I really have not changed my approach and that will be a, the same approach in council presidency. And I think the case that I can use for that is um, the way that I have um, been very public about this bid for this seat. And, you know, I have done that um, because first of all, it always has been public, um, but it has reached a broader audience this time. And there have always been uh, city insiders that have been working and we're working this time a lot behind the scenes, uh, even before November 3rd, uh, to, to get who they want in that seat to carry out their agenda. And um, that is the way that the game has been played. And um, I'm kind of critical of that because we all have uh, something to uh, lose uh, or gain through this seat. And really announcing that I was interested in it um, was a way for me to garner uh, ideas uh, from residents and put this to the public. And I'm glad that it was done like that because it, it provides another opportunity for civic engagement um, and gives us, you know, really an opportunity to even have a bid for the seat. Because I do believe that this, you know, a lot of these decisions may have been made already, unfortunately. Uh, and so that's what's going on at City Hall. I kind of focused on that. We, we don't meet this week or else I would tell you what was on the docket. It, it is Thanksgiving week. So although we have meetings, we won't uh, have council meetings. And uh, I think the week after that as well. So um, I'm free here to answer any questions anyone has about that. Thank you so much. Um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, for those who may not know, um, maybe you can explain what are some of the duties of council president? Why is that important? Yeah, so uh, the main duties of the council president are to um, select the committees that other council members will be sitting on. Uh, those committees are, of course, I, I'm the chair of public safety, there's economic development and intergovernmental relations, there's infrastructure and active transportation. Uh, there are eight committees. Uh, so the council president selects who will be their pro tem and then who will serve on these committees. And then they also set the uh, city council agenda uh, every week or every time that we meet as to what we will be discussing and deciding upon based on that agenda. So those are the two very procedural main things that the council president that does. But I also uh, like to give this example and um, council president Georgia Gomez gave the, this example also um, uh, at the uh, central committee meeting this past week where when I came in, um, Andrea can definitely speak to this, but the community had been advocating for an independent commission um, in, one, in, in one, some shape or another for the past uh, eight years. And when I came in, I knew that that was something that um, was something that I campaigned on, something that was near and dear to my heart um, and something that I wanted to, to get through fully. And I sat down with Council President Gomez and we went through the entire process. Um, this was extremely important and it is important with almost anything that you have to do at the city. Because as we know, the previous um, proposals for an independent commission were held up in process. They were held up in process. And so this, it, it's not, the nuts and bolts of it is really uh, not uh, very sexy. I definitely have a vision, but this is not the vision casting piece of it. This is very a supportive, you know, uh, a role so that the city can, can function appropriately and so that the council can be a strong council and be a strong legislative body, which will be better for the city because there will be checks and balances. So we sat down, there were about nine different steps that we had to go through. And as you all know, it took us a year and a half. And if I had not had that type of support, it would have been much, much harder for me to get that across the finish line. So those are the types of things that I wanna do for the, the council members that are still serving, the council members that are incoming, 
um, to, they know their districts. They have, most of them are coming off of a campaign and if they didn't walk doors then they talked on the phone. They have, they know they live in their communities. They know what their issues are. So the appropriate thing is, is for me to meet with them see what those issues are so that we're not working in silos and see how we can work together to get some things across the finish line. Mm -hmm. You have any other questions? I have a couple of questions. Sure, go ahead. Uh, can I go ahead? Yeah, yes. Thanks. Um, the first question is, I live in D5 actually. Um, so the, the, my question is, do you know how the various um, council members will vote on the uh, presidency vote, um, especially if you have any idea or inkling of how they're leaning and, and, and whatnot, just so that I, you know, I can sort of pressure her to, to, to do the right thing if, if necessary. Um, and my second question is, um, I've been interested for a few years in trying to um, stop the San Diego police collaboration uh, with Israel, uh, a couple of the uh, police executives uh, trained in Israel in 2019. Um, it's part of a training program that's uh, described on the, uh, it's, it's actually done by ADL and other private organizations, but it's described in detail on the uh, Jewish Voice for Peace San Diego website. They have a roster of who participated in 2019. And a couple of them are actually executives from the San Diego City Police Department. Um, so I believe that they, they learned various techniques and um, uh, also surveillance techniques and, and um, other methodologies which are sort of contrary to community policing values. And I wanted to see what, what you can do to um, curtail or stop uh, that type of training that's going on, uh, whether it's domestic or international training, any type of military training that promotes surveillance or, or non-community policing values. Thank you for that. So to answer the first question, because it'll be quick, um, each council member uh, is, is in charge of their own vo voice and their own vote. And so um, as you know, we are advocating and, and um, talking and everything and anyone who wants to be involved in that can, but I can't speak for any of them. Um, the, the only thing that I can say, because it's been said publicly, is that council member Moreno uh, had her words on um, Wednesday evening where she was she was public about her support for me. Um, so that's the only thing that I can say um, about that. So on the training, yeah, and and I this is something that I want to dig in a little bit deeper uh, with the chief of police there. Um, their training is, I think, I don't want it to get uh, I don't want it to get missed under all the rest of these issues, which there, it, I think training goes to some of the foundation of the way uh, that officers uh, are interacting with folks uh, and because of their training, right? So I definitely don't want that to get lost in the mix. Um, I have heard a little bit of what you are, are talking about, but specifically I didn't, I hadn't heard about the uh, participation of, um, of uh, officers from our police department. Uh, can, can certainly put that on the list of things that we can look into. Um, but I think overall training is extremely important. Um, and it goes kind of goes back to the 21st century uh, policing report that President Obama did where they talked about a mentality um, of officers and that, you know, that 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 I think training is a piece of that. Thank you. Um, I'll try to put in the in the chat the link to the Jewish Voice for Peace website, which has the the roster from San Diego, and that might be helpful for for you if you wish. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, Susan, you're next in terms of questions, and then um, Gary, yeah, you're next after. Um, thank you, uh, Councilmember Montgomery Stepp. Um, I um, I I know it was really painful for you. Um, how um, the comments and what happened um, after the vote for defunding the, the, to defund the police, everybody wanted, everybody was, was really focused on that. And I know that there were many, many painful uh, comments and things that were made. Um, I also know that members of this club witnessed a uh, city council member uh, at our last meeting. Um, uh, stomp off the meeting um, because she didn't like 
uh, something that was negative that was said to her. And I just want you to talk about how that particular incident um, that, that occurred to you that was so negative, um, how you turned that in to something so positive. Um, and and just, just talk to us about that. Thank you, Susie. Yeah, that was um, the toughest thing I've had to deal with um, uh, with um, since being a council member, um, because because of the uh, spirit behind what was being said, you know, and the kind of the vitriol behind it. But uh, a couple things. One is, you know, at the end of the day, this is something that I decided to do: good, bad, ugly, indifferent. And I I ask people, please allow me to represent you and your voice. And so that comes with everything that is encompassed within that, including people calling up to city hall and saying very bad things. That, it, it, it does, it does uh, come with it. Second of all, we're in a time, this year has been, um, it has been amazingly treacherous as far as the things that the human beings, us as human beings have had to go through on different levels, some worse than others. Many of people in my community, I'm dealing with some of the highest um, uh, positivity rates uh, in the county for COVID-19 and highest uh, rates of unemployment. Um, not to say that everybody that called was from my district, that's absolutely not the case, but um, there's a lot going on right now. And so uh, we didn't necessarily sign up for a pandemic or to govern in a pandemic, but we did sign up to govern. And this is in the time that we're in, this is a part of that. And what um, I had to do, I believe, was express uh, that part that I understood the hurt and the pain and the anger, even though I may not have agreed with the approach. And then to explain things where I felt like I went wrong and explain things that I felt like I was uh, on point. And, and to do that in a way that is open. You know, I, I did a, a, a healing address. It would probably have been something that we would have done in person if we could, um, but we had to do it via Zoom. And at the end of that, I said, oh, you guys can call me whatever you want. I still love you. And so for me, I, I feel that in order to do this job, there has to be a love for people because it is very hard. And when we are fighting and doing all we can and staying up all night and fighting all day and then to have, you know, those words being thrown at us, that is hard, but it's going to happen and it's not going to stop and it may happen to me again. Uh, and so those are um, just things that come with the territory um, that when we sign up for these positions and we go out and we give people our word and we ask that they allow us to represent them, to serve them, then that's what happens. Uh, it, it could happen. It, sometimes it never happens to elected, but you know, it could happen. And I think to handle that with love, to, with dignity, with grace and with concern um, is the best way to go. And we're gonna need a lot of that going into recovery, going into this next year, especially as we try to come out of the pandemic. After we get the case uh, cases um, controlled, there's going to be economic fallout. This is, this is just the beginning of the things that we're going to have to deal with. And so we have to be able to handle it. We have to be able to lead. That's what leadership is in, in my opinion. And, and yeah, the constant communication, breaking down those bar barriers, explaining uh, what happened and, and how we can move forward has been um, very important. But also on the policy side, asking for that deep dive into the police budget, I think was a good step to where as we make decisions, we can make them um, with an understanding. Mm -hmm. um, Gary, you're next for questions, and then we can have two more questions after that from Michelle and Greg. Thank you. So Gary, Michelle, Greg. Thanks. Um, I just had a comment that I want to ask you about an issue that's important to me, Monica. Um, you know, a lot of us here work in politics and stuff, and you would think that interest groups, as much as they would like to put somebody in office that they feel is more malleable to their potential viewpoint, 
you would think that they would get smarter over time and and actually reach out to somebody who's a leader and try to uh, bridge, you know, put a send a bridge to you since they didn't support you to, when you first ran. <laughs> so some things never change, but you would hope that it would. Um, so um, so that kind of surprises me in a, in a sense. And then, you know, for the Labor Council, uh, somebody who makes comments for them to say they have no comment after you won the recommendation of the San Diego Labor Council, just again, you know, it's shocking to me. So, but uh, the other thing I wanted to say is those of you on the call who have supported other candidates, um, do what I'm doing, you know, reach out to them through email, through phone call, through text, tell them that you support Monica if you do, and let them know why it's important because they're influenced by us ultimately as much as they are by people who give them lots of money for their campaigns. So let them feel a little heat because maybe they're on the fence and they really need to hear from us. So the issue I wanna ask you about Monica that's important to me coming from San Francisco and being a renter here too is rent control. We've had somewhat progressive members of the city council who claim that they're for rent control, talk a good game, but they aren't really, they're not really serious about providing real safety for people who face evictions and that sort of thing. And I know your district in particular, but the whole city and now with COVID, people are really concerned about it. And that's something I'd like to work on because it's important to everyone. So what do you think about it? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I had a community address on Friday and this question came up and I um, have also been a supporter of rent control for a while. I think, I, I think understanding some of my background is important. My, my grandmother raised four kids on her own uh, by herself in what is now Seabreeze Apartments. It, it was Bay Vista Apartments um, in the, right in the middle of District 4. And so because she had that security, she was able to you know, raise four children who uh, two of them went to college. One is a business owner and the other is you know, well esteemed in his, in his industry. And um, without that, she wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, and so I, I think rent control is extremely important. Um, it, is, it has been something that because of the lobby, frankly, it has been hard to get to the nitty gritty and, and tackle that. And it, it, this again comes back to the coalition that I have been able to work with that have been uh, extremely uh, uh, organized and thoughtful and you know, bringing some of those things to the table. Um, that has allowed us to kind of dig in a little deeper. Um, no excuse, just of just kind of having uh, the things that we've had on our plate and hasn't um, haven't been able to bring it to the forefront the way I want to. You know, there are many many um, folks that uh, they're corporate folks, and then there are folks that own property that you know. There's a lot of confusion around this issue, um, and so it is going to take a heavy lift to get anything across the finish line but you know i was supportive i think it was prop 10 in 16 um or eight either 16 or 18 i think it was 18 because i was running and then 21 this time around and it's just been um it's just been a tough thing in california uh san diego in particular but it also is going to determine who is able to live in our city uh, and, who, and who will not so so definitely support um, important to me. And I don't, you um, know, Michelle, you have next. Go, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was just gonna queue up the next questions for you. It was uh, Michelle and then. Thank you. Um, Councilwoman Montgomery Steff, um, thank you for coming out as you have like all week and last week to really talk to people and um, be present to hear directly from us. Um, I am wondering if you might be able to talk about how your background, including the last two years that you've spent on the council, but your background as a lawyer, as having worked in the district four office, as having worked in the mayor's office and the ACLU, how, how that weighs in to making you completely ready to do an amazing job as council president. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for the question. Um, 
So yeah, I think that's extremely important. Um, I uh, did start at the city under, he was interim mayor then, uh, and he is mayor elect now, Todd Gloria. Um, and that was after I made my first run for the district four seat back when uh, Tony Young resigned. I don't know uh, who remembers that, but it, it were nine people and I was nine out of nine. <laughs> Because I just did, you know, was very, very green in what politics actually meant. But in that, I, I was able to be exposed to quite a few people who weren't very green, and were uh, were, you know, impressed with um, my um, knowledge of the community and and the things that I wanted to do and the things that I expressed in the campaign, um, and the fact that I was able to talk about those things. So from there. Um, I was able to work for interim mayor Todd Gloria. And one thing that I did learn from, um, from mayor elect is that, you know, you have to put your heart and soul into this thing. Uh, he worked really, really hard because um, he was doing uh, dual roles as well. So he was working really, really hard. Um, and that really was my first um, experience at city hall, which really helped me. Um, I was able to work on some policy there. Um, and I was also, you know, I, I attended all of our meetings, our community meetings, um, when I worked for him. And so that was that was important. Um, and then going to working a, a few months for for Kevin Faulkner and just seeing how that shift happens with leadership um, a bit. And then also going to work for uh, Myrtle Paul, who I ended up um, running against. What that taught me, though was the way that the city works, um, how it is a challenge to um, get things through the system. And a lot of those challenges are, are procedural. And so procedure is what the council president has to do, have to be on top of um, the how. Uh, I talked about this a little bit in the podcast. It's, it's the how. We have great ideas, but it is the implementation that makes us successful. So through all those different things, also at the ACLU running the local campaign on bail reform, um, you know, really dug into some of those organizing skills, which carried over to the way that I govern, um, which I think has been successful so far in bringing in people and not, you know, leading people out, but bringing people in. The more we have accountability, the more we have sunshine on what we're doing, uh, the better the, the final product is going to be. And so in all of those roles, um, I have I've learned also, you know, in law school, that's what we learn. We learn procedure because you know what, if you're a good, if you're a good attorney on either side, either uh, procedure can, can kill an issue. Sometimes if you don't know the procedure, you can't get to the substance. And so that's why this role is very, very important. And my work has led me to this point to where I think that I would be um, right for this job at this time. Um, and then there's the empathy piece that I talked about, which really is informed by what, um, you know, what my life experience has been and how I try not to ever forget what my life experience has been so that I can always uh, have uh, the, the love in my heart that I need to, to move forward. But procedure qualifications, you know, it, it is, it, it's there, I'm ready. Um, and I think what we've been able to do thus far in, in not quite two years has shown that. So we're ready to hit the ground running. We're ready to go and make this city, you know, a better place for all of us to be. Um, so yes, yeah, so thank you, Michelle, for that question. And that, those are kind of a breakdown of the qualifications that, that lead me to, to, to be able to make this seat successful. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and then uh, Greg, go ahead. Last question. Uh, future uh, Council President uh, Montgomery Stepp. Uh, <laughs> my name is uh, Greg Robinson. I am uh, the president of the Labor Democratic Club. I am a vice president of the AF uh, AFT. That's the teacher union here in town. Uh, and we were particularly active in pushing through the city council your endorsement, uh, my union is. And it should come as a surprise to no one that there are divisions in labor. And honestly, labor has had to struggle for decades around the issue of racism. But I think the direction is positive. 
Um, and again, thank you so much for what you've done so far. I particularly want to thank you for that vote supporting Unite Here, folks. And that involves my next question. We know some of the most vulnerable members of our community are those hotel workers They're out of the Latinx community. These are people who desperately need to support their families in terms of food, just putting the rent check in the mail. Um, and your council was so good about supporting them. I was so disappointed in our governor that he did not extend that as well. And I was wondering if there was anything else you could do, what your position would be as council president to help these very vulnerable members of the union community. And even equally importantly, our communities of color who are so vulnerable in this period of time. Thank you so much for the, the question, Greg, and for everything that you have been doing. And it is very important for us to continue to educate ourselves on uh, the labor movement and the different facets and the, and the different interests because you know uh, it, it's very important and one person doesn't speak for all all the time even though it is a unified effort it definitely is a unified effort so thank you for pointing that out yeah and when i talked about experiencing the unemployment and the case rate you know 18 percent of the people that live in district four work in the hospitality the hospitality industry so we have been been hit extremely hard and i was very happy to support um, the ordinance that was brought forward um, to retain um, retention of, of the most senior uh, workers in, in hotels. Um, what, you know, there are a few things that we have to consider. I mean, I'm very, very hopeful that we uh, get additional uh, money from the feds, but this is going to revolve around budget and prioritization um, in my mind, because it does come down to ways uh, that we are hopefully going to be able to provide people relief. It's gonna, when I talked about that recovery, it's gonna be very, very tough. Um, and that's what how we have to think through those things when we look at the budget, we have to think through, you know, how are we going to prioritize rent relief at this point? Because that is extremely important. And we, we also are going to be, have to, in my opinion, look at this thing as not only what the costs are now, but what the costs will be in the future if we don't act in a certain way. Um, and uh, homelessness, and it, it comes to mind, you know, because if we're not providing the type of relief people need to, to hold, you know, the floor uh, under their feet at this point, then it will have um, repercussions as we go down the line and we're gonna be spending money anyway. Um, so we, I think leading with that intention is going, is going to be extremely important. You know, we have to also, we have lobbyists too, um, that go to the state and the feds. Um, and so we have to, in the case of the, you know, the, or, the ordinance, unfortunately, that was at the state or the bill that was at the state level that the governor ended up uh, not supporting. Um, those are the types of things that we as a city can need to say, look, put this on this list and make it a priority when you are advocating and lobbying for us at the state. And that is if the lobbyists make it past the budget season, but that's another thing. Um, and that, that, that's another question, right? We have to think about that. How much are we spending on these things um, and, and how much of it is going um, back to the people who need it the most? All right, um, thanks so much. Um, so um, we're gonna um, move quickly to um, our our next speaker, um, St. Julian, uh, who uh, is instrumental in uh, the passage of Measure B. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know Measure B, it, this kind of is like the through line of um, the, the meeting is citizen and um, constituent input on different city practices, whether it be um, the traffic lights or uh, the police oversight board, which uh, has been referenced. by I think all of our speakers thus far. Uh, so um, Andrea St. Julian, um, you are up next. Thank you, thank you so much. So uh, I am speaking because I am co-chair of San Diegans for Justice, which was the committee that, um, that supported Measure B uh, on the ballot. And uh, the first, first thing I just wanna say a little bit more about what Measure B was. Measure B created the Commission on Police Practices, which is a community-led oversight commission 
that will adjudicate complaints against the uh, against police officers and also recommend best practices for the police department. The first thing always is my gratitude to everyone who helped get Measure B passed. Um, as I think Monica mentioned, this has been something, this particular measure we've been working on for around eight years. Trying to get a robust oversight committee, a commission is something that the community is trying to, has tried to do for over 30 years. Uh, so it is something uh, it's uh, this been very, very difficult to do. And uh, I want to, there are so many people on, uh, on this call right now who were helpful and I like Doug and Michelle and Genevieve and and I always hate to mention people because I leave other people out, but I want to thank everybody who was so supportive of Measure B. But you know, when I get to that, of course, there's one person that I really have to thank and who was a godsend on, on Measure B. And that is Monica Montgomery Stepp. Um, we had been working at this for years. Um, the Police Officers Association had been just viciously opposing us and working through the city council to oppose us. Many members of city council uh, would um, essentially uh, impede the process through procedural um, uh, uh, methods as, as Monica has stated, um, but all that changed. All of that changed when Monica became a city council member. And, it, and actually it started a little before. I remember when I called Monica to ask her about uh, the charter amendment that became Measure B. I didn't really even have to say anything to Monica. She already knew about the issue. She already knew what was going on and what needed to be happened. And, all, and she said to me, I have always been supportive of this. I, there was nothing I had to do to, to try to talk her into it. Monica's bottom line was, this is something that is good for San Diego. I support it and I will always support it. So when Monica was elected, you know, uh, I wasn't sure what would happen if her support would continue because the Police Officers Association is a very powerful and formidable body here in San Diego. And not only did it continue, um, uh, it strengthened. Monica took on Measure B and she was tenacious about it. And the, but the other thing I was a little concerned about, I said, you know, Monica's new on the city council and you know, I, I just don't know how that's, that's gonna work. What I was really amazed at was the skill that she used to get the charter amendment onto the ballot is measure B. We had been working so hard to even try to make steps to getting it on the ballot. Monica took this charter amendment and she got it through every stage of the city council. And we had to jump through a couple of extra hoops and she got it passed through every stage with a unanimous vote, a unanimous vote. So, I have to really thank Monica for not just her dedication, uh, not just her dedication to the uh, charter amendment and measure B, but really her dedication to the community because it was just all about, this is something that had to be done, but also the skill that she used to get it through. I mean, that really amazed me. I thought, you know, um, she's just on the city council, but she had a tremendous amount of skill and, and got that through. So um, we, and if I, forgive me if I already mentioned this, but we passed with 75% of the vote, which was amazing. Uh, we are ecstatic about that. And I think we knew, we, or we really believed that it would pass because we had so much grassroots support for Measure B. We had no idea that it was gonna pass by such a huge margin. Because we were just a, uh, we're just a grassroots movement, you know, organization. You know, um, we didn't have big money behind us. We didn't have 
any any large political body uh, with us, we just we just had the people with us, and so to pass with seventy five percent of the vote was was huge. So, what are the next steps with Measure B? Well, now that the Charter Amendment has passed, um, we need to make sure that this new commission is funded, and that there is an ordinance that's implemented to support the commission. Uh, I'll, some people don't really understand that a charter amendment creating the commission is really just a skeleton of what the commission is. It, it, provi it uh, provides really the, the basis for it, but the flesh is um, really um, uh, the ordinance. So uh, uh, that's something that's really important for us to get that ordinance passed. So what we really need to do first in terms of funding is making sure that each city council member tells the mayor uh, that funding the commission, adequately funding the commission is, is, has got to be a priority. So we, we really would like uh, really everybody on this call to call their, their city council member and say, hey, please let the mayor know that adequately funding um, the, city, the, um, uh, the new commission is a priority. The other thing we're really gonna need is your support on the, on the new ordinance. The ordinance is gonna be really tough. And uh, I think the only thing that, that gives me solace in thinking about creating this, this ordinance is my belief and hope that Monica Montgomery is going to be the city council president because it really is that procedural stuff that can get something stuck and you need a city council president uh, who is supportive of your issue who will make sure that there are no procedural snafus and I, I, I know Monica can and will make that happen as city council president. Um, and I also uh, know that if she is not city council pre president, that it will be very likely that there will be interests that will prevent um, the, uh, a, a, an appropriate ordinance from uh, being promulgated. So uh, I'm extremely um, concerned about that. Uh, and um, one of the things that we're doing is we are working very closely with the uh, CRB, which is the, the uh, former board or soon to be former board that, that provided uh, police oversight, uh, community led police oversight. And uh, they have been wonderful in moving forward and transitioning into the new commission. And they've taken a lot of, a lot of steps to make sure that that transition is a smooth one. And we're very su supportive of their efforts. And in fact, San Diegans for Justice is holding a joint forum with the CRB on November 30th to gather information from the community as to what they want to see in this new commission. Uh, and so I would encourage everyone to attend that, uh, that, uh, that forum. I think that it will probably be, uh, the information about it will be on the CRB's website. Uh, Doug can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and also we will have that information on San Diegans for Justice's website and that's sandiegansforjustice.com. So that's kind of where we're at and uh, I'd love to take questions. Does anybody have questions? Marin, uh, can you see the hands raised? Sorry, Andrea, I think we're having a technical problem. I no worries. Marin, I think Marin lost her audio. Okay. Oh, yeah. no, that was, yeah. But I uh, got, got logged back on. Um, so um, I think uh, just in the interest of, um, yeah, sorry. Did I did I miss any raised hands when I was off when I was cut off right there? I have my hand raised, Marin. Okay, Kip, go ahead. Um, yeah. I'm so grateful to all our speakers for coming today and giving us such confidence in Councilmember Montgomery's steps 
leadership and experience. Um, and I'd like to make the motion to add our name, the club's name to support for Monica Montgomery Step for San Diego City Council President, which would also be ratifying uh, the e-boards um, agreement to add our name, the Point Loma Dems to support her bid for City Council President. I second it. <laughs> That's quick, Susan. <laughs> okay, uh, so we do have a, a, a motion. Uh, Your sound is bad, Marin. No, Susan, no. My sound is bad. Okay. Is this yep. is this okay now? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thanks. Thanks, Mary. Um, so uh, this would be uh, this is a motion ratifying the e boards agreement to endorse. No, you can't hear me. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, yeah, the sound. You're gone oh, again, yeah. Marin. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Okay. So Kip, uh, may, Susan, can you can you restate it if my audio keeps cutting out and then um, I will call for a vote on that? Let's let Kip restate it. Yeah, so the motion is to ratify the e board's agreement to add our name, the Point Loma Democrats, to support Monica Montgomery Step for city council president. Um, and then Susan has seconded. Um, yes, yes to add our, any discussion. I was calling out the, the thing in the chat. Is there any discussion? Any at all? This is this is Angela. I support it full. Um, I think she would be great as our president, and I encourage our membership to vote in favor. Same. I I I, I also uh, encourage a vote in favor. I, um, I personally like have endorsed. Yes, and I I um, I would also like to. Um, to make a comment in that um, I think it's remarkable that we had a city council um, member from another district come and speak to us um, and to give us so much information about what was what is going on and to talk to us in such an open and honest way. It was it was just remarkably refreshing. And I'm extremely grateful. Really exciting to have this opportunity to elect her as city council president. Call the question. Go ahead, Ruth. I said, call the question. That means vote. <laughs> that it means doesn't quite. Vote. Yep. It, it doesn't. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah, just say Ruth. It doesn't yes, quite no. mean that. So we'll, we'll let Marin go ahead and, and explain how the <laughs> voting will work in the participants tab. Okay. In the participants tab. Um, so uh, if all of those in favor, you may uh, chat. Is this what we agreed on for right to chat the vote? You just John? raise hand. I think we just go ahead we and raise, raise hands. hands. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll do that. Um, okay, so all of those in favor, you raise your hand in your part on not like your actual physical hand, your virtual hand. You need, so all of the, those in you need to go to the participants tab. And is there, thank you. Yes, you go to the participants tab, you find yourself and you raise your hand. There's a little um, thing that will say, yes, there we go. I support, but I'm not a voting member. That's why my hand's not raised. Got it. Okay, so those of you who are voting members of the club, may raise your hand in the participants tab. You go to participants, um, you click on where it says more, you can raise your hand there. Kip hasn't found the tab yet. Okay. I know that we have a few non 
give it a, okay, Kip, can, can you let me know when you have counted? Yes. Greg's yeah. vote is for himself and Susie, okay. FYI. Yeah, and Kip, I can't raise my hand as the host, but if you wanna, if you wanna raise a very large hand, that would be good. Ruth, can't you find the participants tab to vote? You're voting yes. Mm -hmm. And um, Kip, add to it, John Conway, my husband, who's a member who's sitting here with me, but can't raise our hands twice. Okay. And I'm Louise Titlow, and I cannot, for some reason, find the tab. So I'm a member. Louise Titlow? Got it. Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. It, it... Okay, I think he's counting them up. Also, Greg, um, um, Greg and his wife, um, uh, Suzanne, they're both members. So that would be Greg Robinson and his wife, those two votes. Mm. Okay. okay, and then what we'll do is we'll lower all the hands. Everybody, every, everybody who had your hand raised, click the button where it says lower. Yeah, I, I, I'll just lower all of them from here. So I have uh, 17 votes and uh, 26 participants. So the motion has passed. Thank you, everybody. Everybody, right. okay, now we can pop okay. the champagne corks. Yay! <laughs> okay, but wait, we, I still have I still have some questions for Andrea, so does anybody else? <laughs> um, Please. <laughs> um, so in terms of action items um, for club members, we have lobby your council member to fund um and then is there are there any other action items that we ought to be doing in terms of making sure that this commission is um kind of goes forward smoothly and in the spirit in which it was intended to have as much constituent input as as possible sure also please lobby todd gloria uh, okay. please let him know that you want the new commission to be adequately funded uh, that and that uh, adequately, adequately and quickly funded, um, uh, both uh, both things. Also, uh, we need input from the community as to what they want to see in the commission. So uh, please join us on November thirtieth at the forum. You can uh, leave a comment. Also, uh, please visit sandiegansforjustice.com. And we will, we don't have it up yet, but we will eventually have additional information um, where you can um, uh, provide your comments on what you'd like to see in a commission. And one way to do that is to go to San Diegans for Justice and just sign up to get our emails. That would be, that would be really the best thing. Yeah, sandiegansforjustice.com. Please go, please sign up. You will we'll be able to say, and we don't send a whole lot of stuff out, but when there are things that need to be done, we'll send them out where you can do simple things to support us. Okay, and then to my understanding, um, the uh, members of this commission are going to be selected from the community at large and appointed by city council staff, um, or is that not all the way hashed out? Um, yeah, so again, the charter amendment is just the skeleton. Um, the actual appointments will be made by the city, by city council, but that is not, uh, the city council will not choose uh, who to nominate. Uh, that process still has to uh, uh, be hashed out in the ordinance. So um, there'll be a process for nominating uh, individuals to be on the commission and then the city council will appoint them. And yes, uh, someone asked if the uh, um, 30th, November 30th is gonna be Zoom. Yes, it will be on a Zoom link. All right. Um, is there anything else that, that uh, we should kind of know or kind of have in? It's, it's, it's funny. I always want to give people jobs, right? And now that the election is over, it's like hard. It's like we need some action items. 
Um, is there anything else that you can think of in the pipeline that would be um, kind of um, related to this or any other work that San Diegans for Justice is working on as well? Yeah, San Diegans for Justice, actually, we've decided that we're gonna stick around. Uh, so we're gonna continue as a pack and we will be expanding into additional areas. And so again, please please sign up for our emails at sandagansforjustice.com and uh, you'll get information as it comes out. Excellent, excellent. Does anybody else have any questions? I have one more thing. I just want to remind everyone uh, on this call who's a member, tell your friends and neighbors um, to please sign up um, your support. Uh, uh, it's www.monicaforpres.org and you will be asked to put your, um, your city council district on there and a lot of support from district two, I think is, uh, has, makes a statement. So uh, Monica uh, for the number four prez, P -R -E -Z org. Thank you. All right, um, so do we have any old business? I don't think so. Any new business anybody would like to raise? So this is Angela. I, I just wanna remind everybody, um, unfortunately we are not gonna have an in-person holiday party this year as all of you have probably assumed and understood. So I just wanna encourage everybody to take a look at the email that Marin sent out yesterday about um, this meeting, which included the information for the Western Service Workers Association and included that link, which makes it so you can purchase uh, toys for the children who have been, um, who they very much want to be able to provide gifts to this year. So if you can really think about doing that, the link was in the email that was sent out yesterday. And, um, uh, they will appreciate everything that you can do for them. Thanks, Angela. Um, and thanks, we'll be sending out a follow-up with a lot of different resources. Um, he, uh, looks like no new business. Um, and in terms of reports, um, that's exactly what I was getting to. Uh, um, I'll let you go first, Kip, for reports. Yes, uh, so we had that meeting last uh, month about the uh, height limit and there are minutes from uh, that meeting. There was a lot of great history uh, there. Um, they should be online, but I might be able to pop them on screen if I can screen share, um, if we could just approve those minutes together. You like to move to approve those minutes? If I can. Can we have a motion to approve those minutes, anybody? I move that we approve the minutes. Unless... Any uh, second? Sorry, can Kip, are you I... able to share? No, but if I can, I can. Oh, now I can. Here we go. Here we go. So uh, here are the minutes from uh, last meeting, um, and we'll see um, a lot of great detailed notes just about um, what Kathy Blavitt especially had to say, um, as well as the uh, two different uh, speakers. These will be available um, online. So it looks like we have a motion from Susan, if we could get a second. This is Angela, I will second. You. Okay, well, Susan already did. Okay, all of those in, all of those in favor? Aye. Okay. I, I am assuming unanimous, unanimous consent. Any, any, any opposition? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think so. We're good. All Thank right, um, motion carried. Thanks. Hey, uh, you have a report today? Marin, who did you say? I said Angela, do you have a report? Yes, just real quick. I wasn't assuming so. But, um, okay. 
Our checking account, our current balance is $7,798. We do have some checks that are still outstanding, one of which includes the fact that we did make a donation this year for the Ocean Beach Holiday Food and Toy Drive um, because we are not participating in the um, parade. Um, we also made a donation to the Western Service Workers Association. Um, and as the, in the uh, chat, encouraging people and reminding them that uh, we will be looking for renewal of memberships uh, for 2021. Uh, you can renew any time online at our website. Uh, we will eventually send out by mail uh, membership renewal forms as well. Um, but you can renew any time and your membership will be good until December 31st of 2021. And that's it. All right. All right. Um, so yeah, no holiday party this year. Um, we, uh, we will maybe look to do something virtual. So check your um, inbox for that. Um, and uh, we'll adjourn at 537. Thank you guys all so much um, for attending. Thank you all for all of your hard work um, pushing Dems across the finish line. Uh, this month, and uh, we appreciate you all. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. Yeah, and just a quick reminder to everybody if you want to download the chat, if you open the chat window, there's three little dots on the bottom right hand corner. And if you click on that and hit save chat, it will download everything to your device. And in case you're wondering, there's a whole bunch of links just thrown in at the end there, which are all for anybody interested in getting involved. Um, with the ongoing battle in Georgia. Uh, December the 7th is the deadline for voter registration in that state. Um, so the next two weeks, we want to try and get as many Dems registered as possible. And then after that, you know, obviously get the candidates elected. So there's a bunch of links there if you want to get involved, either with postcards and writing or donating. Um, and if you have any questions on that, just reach out to the club. Marin, can you tell us about our dues? And I saw you had the chat about uh, renewing. Oh, the renew your membership. Membership, yeah. Um, so you you can renew membership on the website, um, and it I think March is the closing period to you must renew by March. Um, Angela, uh, Jan January the first. It's January the first. Depending when we joined. Because I'm a new member. Um, no, it's not depending on when you joined. Angela, go oh. ahead. You can explain this better yes, than I can. Yes, so for our club, um, essentially starting uh, in November of the prior year, when you do your membership, it will be for the following entire calendar year. And during a calendar year, if you um, become a member, it is only for that calendar year. So mm -hmm. essentially, everybody starts at the beginning on um for upcoming for 2021. Um, and the thing about the March date is that if you do not renew by March, then you become ineligible to vote until you do your renewal and you attend one meeting. So the advantage of trying to renew prior to March is that you maintain your membership and are eligible to vote. Um, meetings like the, yes. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Oh, Other questions? Mary, and I have a question. Yeah. Do you do you have uh, one of the cards that uh, postcards that Brandon had? Do you have one at home um, right now? I don't actually, but you know what? I see him at the co-op all the time, so I can get one. Okay. Where I are they? I see a few actually. Okay, because Doug Case wants one. Okay. I, the next time that I'm there, I'll just pick up like a little stack. Angela, okay, where are they? Do you see Greg's? They're at, at People's Co-op. They set up a table, like right outside. Okay, I'll get, I'll get them. I'll get one. Never mind. I, right. I will take a look, but it's under membership under the Point Loma Dem dot org. Yeah, the, the link is in the chat. Oops. There's a note from Greg saying that he's trying to renew now and no place to renew. Just join. Well, okay. So technically you are joining mm -hmm. each year. We know that it's a renewal because we know right. that you were a member during the last year. So it's essentially when you um, become a member, we know that it's a renewal versus if you're a new member. 
we should have John since he's so technology technologically <laughs> brilliant. Maybe fix that. Yeah. Add add yeah. to it. You're right. You're right. Absolutely right, Gary. Some somebody <laughs> should talk to him about that and make sure he goes on and does it now. <laughs> But we definitely keep track of everybody uh, in terms of if it's a renewal as compared to a new membership. All right, thanks everybody. I'm gonna log off. Um, it was so nice to see you all. See you all. Bye. Great, thanks, Mary. Bye, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, everybody. Have a great Thanksgiving. Thank okay. you. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>